Welcome to Atmospheric Sciences 5000, Day 14. Our objectives for today are being pulled from Stoll Chapter 5, Sections 5.3, 5.4, and 5.5. And the summary of today's activities is we're going to be playing around with and uh, trying to learn how to use this QT diagram to make some uh, initial measurements of water vapor mixing ratio the saturation water vapor mixing ratio, the relative humidity, the wet bulb temperature, the potential temperature, the equivalent potential temperature, and then we'll also use the skew T diagram to figure out the lifting condensation level, the level of free convection, and the equilibrium level. So here we have our skew T diagram. It's a section of the skew T diagram. In this section, it goes from essentially 100 kilopascals to 40 kilopascals on the vertical axis. And then we have two different axes kind of labeled at the bottom. We have temperature ranging from minus 20 degrees Celsius to positive 30 degrees Celsius. And then we have the mixing ratio in grams per kilogram ranging from 1 to 20 uh, grams per kilogram. And to find the mixing ratio, W, or in terms of the Stoll textbook, R, we basically need to have two pieces of information. Um, we need to know the pressure, and we need to know the dew point temperature. So in this particular example, uh, let's say that we have an air parcel that is at uh, 85 kilopascals and has a temperature of 5 degrees C, that's the red dot, and then it happens to have a dew point temperature of minus 6 degrees C, and that is the dew point temperature. So you'll notice that this dew point temperature happens to fall directly on one of the dashed purple lines. Those dashed purple lines are the isohumes, or the uh, lines of constant uh, mixing ratio. And if you follow one of those lines down from the dew point temperature to the axis, you can basically read it off. Um, and in this particular case, um, you follow it down and that comes down to the three grams per kilogram uh, mixing ratio. So all you need is the basically the dew point temperature and the pressure and you can immediately read off the mixing ratio of the air parcel in grams per kilogram. Next, we'll be using the skew T diagram to determine the saturation mixing ratio. Now recall that the saturation mixing ratio is the maximum amount of water vapor that can exist at a given temperature and is independent of the dew point temperature. So for the example that we were looking at with our temperature at five degrees C and our pressure at 85 kilopascals, you'd use the same procedure that you did to calculate the mixing ratio, but instead of following the isohumes down to the axis um, from the dew point temperature, you're going to do the same thing from the temperature. So following a line parallel to the dashed purple lines down to the axis, um, you can follow that all the way down to the axis and read off a value of, in this case, 6.5 grams per kilogram of water would be the saturation mixing ratio. So now that we have determined the mixing ratio and the saturation mixing ratio, we can use those to determine the relative humidity of the air parcel because the relative humidity can be computed as 100 times the ratio of the mixing ratio to the saturation mixing ratio. In the example above, our mixing ratio was 3 and our saturation mixing ratio was 6.5. You take that ratio, multiply it by 100, and you'll end up with a relative humidity of 46%. <clears throat> now you can see from this diagram that as the dew point temperature gets closer and closer to the actual temperature, the water vapor mixing ratio, W, or in terms of Stoll, R, um, would get closer and closer to the saturation value and the relative humidity would get higher and higher.
approaching 100%. We're now going to use the skew t to determine the wet bulb temperature. So in this particular example, we have an air parcel that has a temperature of 20 degrees C, and we have a dew point temperature of zero degrees C. And the procedure is as follows. You follow the temperature uh, upwards along a dry adiabat. So essentially you're lifting an air parcel up uh, until it intersects the isohume, which is the line of uh, constant mixing ratio that passes through the dew point, in this case, the green line. So you're going to follow the green line and the red line up until they intersect. And once they intersect, then you're going to follow a saturated adiabat back down to the original pressure surface, in this case, uh, 85 uh, kilopascals. Uh, and by doing that, in this particular example, you'll end up with a wet bulb temperature of 10 degrees C. And once again, you can see that the wet bulb temperature is a measure of um, the humidity of the atmosphere because as the dew point temperature gets closer to the actual temperature, um, the wet bulb temperature is also going to get closer to the actual temperature as well. And when the relative humidity is equal to 100%, the temperature is going to be equal to the dew point temperature, which is also going to be equal to the wet bulb temperature at a relative humidity of 100%. Here, we use the skew T to determine the equivalent potential temperature. So we start off with an air parcel that has a temperature, in this case, of 10 degrees C and a dew point temperature of minus 8 degrees C. And uh, that's denoted by the red and uh, the green circles. So we, the procedure, you follow the a dry adiabat up from the temperature, so up and to the left, uh, until it intersects with the isohume, which is the um, mid -con line of constant mixing ratio that comes up and passes through the dew point temperature until those intersect. Uh, that will be your lifting condensation level. Beyond that, you will be following a moist adiabat uh, all the way up to the upper reaches of the atmosphere. And then once that line becomes parallel with the dry adiabats, then you will follow a dry adiabat all the way back down to a pressure of 100 kilopascals, at which point you read off the temperature, and that is your theta E. In this case, it happens to be 32 uh, degrees Celsius. 
Here we're going to use the skew t diagram to determine the lifting condensation level, which is essentially the cloud base for an air parcel that's lifted from the surface. So in this example, we're starting off with an air parcel of a temperature of 9 degrees C and a dew point of 0 degrees C. And if we lift this air parcel, it's going to, its temperature is going to decrease dry adiabatically, which means that it's going to be parallel to one of the dry adiabats, which are the sloping solid green lines. And so we'll follow that up until it intersects the isohume, which is the line of constant uh, mixing ratio that passes through the dew point. Uh, and where those two meet is defined as your lifting condensation level. And that will be where your cloud base is. Now, in cases where there's significant moisture variability in the lower atmosphere, there are other ways to determine the lifting condensation level by taking the average moisture content of the lower level. Um, but here we're just introducing the simple concept of using a surface air parcel to determine the lifting condensation level. Here we have to introduce the concept of the level of free convection. So when we lift an air parcel, and what we have to do is we have to compare its temperature to the environmental temperature. In this particular example, uh, we have the red line, which is the Raywinson data plotted on the skew T from an actual balloon sounding. And the solid green, the fluorescent green line is the dew point temperature uh, measured from the sounding as well. And superimposed upon that, we have our air parcel, which is basically um, the blue lines. And so we start off with our same air parcel with a temperature of 9 degrees C and a dew point of 0 degrees C. We lift it dry adiabatically until it reaches the lifting condensation level. And above the lifting condensation level, the air parcel will change temperature at the saturated adiabatic lapse rate, which is the dashed green line. It will follow that dashed green line up. And in this case, um, <clears throat> everything up until about uh, 67.5 kilopascals, the blue line or the temperature of your air parcel is less than the temperature of the environment, which is the red line. So if you were to lift an air parcel up to 70 kilopascals and let go, the air parcel would be colder than the environment, which means that it would be more dense than the environment, which means that if you let go, it will sink back down uh, to its starting location, basically. And that's kind of a definition of the stable atmosphere. But you can see that if you lift this air parcel all the way up to 67.5 kilopascals, the temperature of the air parcel is now equal to the temperature of the environment. The red and the blue lines are intersecting one another. And if you continue to lift that air parcel above 67.5 kilopascals, the blue line, which is following the moist adiabat, will indicate that the air parcel has a temperature that is greater than the environment. And in that situation, if you let go of the air parcel at that point, it will be warmer than the environment and it will um, spontaneously rise because it's less dense. And at that point, uh, we have what we call free convection, um, spontaneous uh, vertical motion in the atmosphere. And we define that crossover point, uh, in this case, the intersection of the environmental uh, lapse or the environmental temperature measured with the Raywinson balloon with our air parcel temperature uh, as the level of free convection. Here, we're going to use the skew T to determine the equilibrium level of a lifted air parcel. The equilibrium level, uh, it can be thought of as the um, cloud top uh, in deep convection. So here we have an air parcel that is lifted from the surface. Uh, we determine the lifting condensation level uh, in a way that we have described previously. We determine the level of free convection 
just as we did in the previous one. And above the level of free convection, our air parcel is still following the moist adiabat, the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. And in this one, we don't have the nice color codes on the temperature and the dew point temperature, but you can see that the right uh, solid line that's kind of jagged is in fact the temperature as measured by the Ray Winson balloon. And up at 19 kilopascals, the blue line will intersect the temperature of the environment. So everywhere on this example, between uh, 50, excuse me, between 60 kilopascals, where the level of free convection is at, and 119 kilopascals, the air parcel signified by the blue line is warmer than the environment. And hence you have that spontaneous uh, vertical motion. But once the air parcel reaches 19 kilopascals, it's now the same temperature as the environment. Uh, and if it were to continue even higher than that, then you would see that the air parcel would become colder than the environment. And of course, if it's colder than the environment, it'll be more dense and it'll sink back down to the new equilibrium level at this point at 19 kilopascals. So in this particular example, if we were to lift an air parcel from the surface, it would form its uh, uh, cloud base uh, down there at about uh, 86 kilopascals. If you continued to force that air parcel up and you force the air parcel up above 60 kilopascals, it would then spontaneously rise. And once it started to spontaneously rise, it would not stop until it reached the 19 kilopascal level. So in this case, you're going to have very deep convection extending throughout most of the depth of the entire troposphere from essentially 86 kilopascals all the way up to 19 kilopascals.